Despite the escalating geopolitical tension between Russia and Ukraine, the performance of the Nigerian financial market will remain bullish in both the equities and fixed income space. As equities markets recorded gains in the month of February, as investors reacted positively to the general impressive full-year results of some listed companies, but this sentiment is most likely to win without any market catalyst. However, in the first quarter of 2022, Nigeria's money markets proved to be liquid, with the results uh, that the institutional investors subscribed in high volumes to Nigerian Treasury bills, federal government auctions, as they were equally active in the secondary markets. Well, last week, the NGX All Share Index lost 0.26%, its third consecutive week loss, uh, weekly loss to settle at 46,842.86 points, the lowest level since 31st January 2022. Well, joining me via Zoom to understand this development, he is the Managing Director and Chief Business Officer of Optimus by Afri-Invest, Mr. Ayodiji Ebo. Good afternoon and thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon, and thanks for having me. Great stuff. Now, global markets have slowed down their growth since the war in Ukraine began in February. Now, to what extent have our disruptions in capital flows and build-up hit markets in sub-Saharan Africa? Okay, thanks. Uh, the first thing we need to note is that investors don't like uncertainty. And when you look at the strategic um, role that... Uh, Russia plays in in global trade. You would you would uh, agree with me that they have um, there's a lot of impact that that would have on on the total uh, global trade, especially in the euro region. Also, part of what has been amplifying this is the sanctions that we are also seeing, which affects countries. You know, we're already we're in a global world that every um, all the countries uh, are interconnected and by the time you are trying to isolate one or two countries it affects the flow of capital so what we've seen uh, with the initial expectation or with I would say with the expectation that uh, would work, uh, the, that the interest rates would increase in the global space as there in the US we've seen uh, the Bank of England increase rates almost two or three times. Also, the U.S. Fed has also increased rates, which is negative for the equities market. So we, we saw that sell-off significantly earlier this year. But before the war uh, began between uh, Ukraine and, and Russia, which now led to uh, further pressure on, on the market. Because what we are seeing is that uh, there's, it's, it's the rise in global commodity prices that we're seeing both oil energy prices have grown significantly when you check uh, fuel prices in most of the euro continent and the us you would see that it has almost doubled and that is leading that has led to uh, rise in prices of goods which would in, which may if it's sustained for long would impact on purchasing power and may push the economy into economic recession so these are some of the um, the, the caution that um, most of the investors are taking into consideration uh, before taking decisions. So we would say that uh, the current situation we are seeing in the last one or two months has caused a lot of volatility in the market. Uh, for short-term uh, investors, yes, uh, it's doing volatility that most of them also make a lot of money. Those that understand the market, that those are savvy investors. And for long-term investors, the way we always view the market is it's also a time to also load up for the long time because we also always know that this um, most of prices will not last for long. Even when you look at how the uh, the U.S. market is structured, you would know that with the expected rise in interest rates would also impact some sector like the financial services sector. So all in, it's not all gloom. Uh, and uh, we believe that there are still opportunities despite a lot of the uncertainties that we are seeing in the global markets. Great stuff. Nigeria has also developed a system structure or a system for sourcing infrastructure capital from China. 
which now seems to have run into each is, of course, uh, the affairs about repayment schedules as Nigeria's debt boarding mounts. Do you advise uh, a complete slowdown to borrowing from China or direct funding from domestic assets earnings? Okay, thanks. Um, a very good question. And for me, I will never be against any borrowings that is tied to productive productivity to the sector. So if we are borrowing directly and we're using to grow our infrastructure, in the long run, when you look at the multiplier effect, it's really going to yield that positive result by reducing cost of production, uh, uh, reducing the bottlenecks that we're seeing uh, within the business space. So any borrowing that is tied into projects, uh, the concern that we always, we always have about borrowing and looking at the current budget structure this year, uh, on the back of the rise in uh, petrol subsidy, you would uh, you would note that when you see the re revenue projected of about um, about eight eight trillion, and when you already know that fifty percent of that may be used to subsidize um, uh, subsidize well that benefits a few set of people, so you would uh, note that there may be nothing left for major critical sectors. Yeah, for the capital expenditure, I think it's about 4.5 trillion Naira is being earmarked to be spent on capital expenditure. But we look at the recurrent and uh, non-debt recurrent expenditure, it's uh, almost about 4 trillion Naira. So you would, um, in terms of the borrowings, it, we will need to, I would encourage that we reduce borrowing for non-productive sector. Uh, we need to run Nigeria like a private sector. If you cannot grow your revenue, currently government is having challenges in growing in re revenue, especially the oil oil sector uh, due to the high tech and low investment within that space in the last few months. So there needs to look and uh, government needs to look at how they want to cut down their expenses so that the, the borrowings that would be used to support that will reduce and in the long run, we will be able to channel more of those borrowings to, se to sectors, to productive sectors that will enable us to be able to repay. Hmm. Brilliant one. Then, now, but let's now look at the debt market. Uh, of course, recently it's been dominated by federal government bonds. Can the government continue to raise bonds uh, in endless fashion? Okay, thanks. Uh, I believe that uh, the amount of the ability to raise bonds would also be premised on the available liquidity in the system. So you would see when you look at first quarter, the liquidity uh, in the system or that we expect that matured into the system was over a trillion. So that gave enough buffer for the government to be able to raise enough Debt. So when you look at most of those auctions, you see that the allotment at the end of the day is significantly higher, if not almost two times of what government plans to offer at both the bond auction and the treasury bills auction. But when, as we go into the second half of, uh, we started, we started the second half of the year towards the third quarter, you would see that liquidity would minimize. So the ability for government to raise significant funds would be limited, but if they also have to raise it, it means it will come at a higher rate because investors would demand higher rates. Uh, it's a market of demand and supply. So as long as the liquidity system is not as much as what government needs to absorb, then you expect that interest rates would increase. And would we expect to begin to see that rise in interest rates as we approach the end of the half year. Mm. Many public listed companies also shy away from uh, issuing the ventures as alternative sources of financing their operations. What do you think or what do you consider as problems hindering this development? Sorry, please, can you come again? All right, I was asking you that many of these public listed companies are always shy away from issuing the ventures as alternative sources of financing their operations. What is happening? Why? What's hindering this development? Okay, thanks. The first thing we need to note is what, uh, what the ventures are. So most times the ventures are convertible. So you, it's uh, both debt and equity in, in nature. 
And what, what we are seeing currently is for most companies prefer to go for debts if they want to go for debts only and if they actually need equity, they go directly for that. But when we talk about um, the ventures, it means that uh, after a period, excuse me, you can also convert that into equity. So uh, most companies, yes, they have their uh, their objective, they have their business strategy in terms of what they, what they would like to achieve. But what we currently see is that most companies are going for short-term funding in form of commercial paper on the back of lower interest rates in the treasury bills. So as we begin to see increase in the treasury bills rates, as well as the bond rate, that will limit the ability of the corporates for them to be able to raise uh, raise debts because uh, the cost of debt will, may not uh, be, uh, may not make any business sense for most of them again. So the number of or the issuances that we we'll see is also likely to to thin out. But uh, I won't say that there is any problem in terms of um, raising uh, the ventures. Uh, but uh, the the strategy, the current strategy, most companies are shying away from convertibles. What would uh, dilute their current holdings? And that is why you would see that there's been limited public offers. Say, for you look at uh, MTN that we had in December, it's been long that we had any public offering in Nigeria. Uh, most of what we have been seeing in the equity space is more more of a right uh, right issuance, which is available only to existing uh, shareholders. Almost finally, now let's when we talk about capital formation. Well, we play down, or we can even say totally ignore, regional co corporations in ECOWAS and African Union. Now, how do we fund, support African uh, businesses uh, through internal capital or equities share capital so that we stop paying too much attention to Europe and Asia? Yes, so in terms of um, capital uh, formation, so I, I believe that what we need to do is to rely more on private on the private sector and the based on the challenges in terms of um, the revenue uh, mobilization from the federal government there needs to be more focus on how the private sector can be comfortable to channel funds into a lot of this project so that we can drive up our investment uh, and then as a result of that, we'll begin to see um, significant growth. Mm. Interesting. Before I let you go, let's now do a review of our own of margin markets in focus. We've seen it flip-flop up, down. Uh, last week was even fair before uh, we went around the Easter holidays. What's your assessment considering results that are already in from um, some financial institutions? Sorry, I didn't get that, please. I said, let's do an overview of the Nigerian market uh, with what it's been flip-flop, positive, negative. Uh, so what do you make? And even the results coming in from some financial institutions, what is your assessment? Okay, thanks. Uh, so uh, like you rightly uh, highlighted at the beginning of the program, whoops, we saw the market rallied on the back of strong earnings. And as a result of that, uh, we saw improved buying interest, especially companies that pay um, good dividend. And that has been, that impact has been thinning out. And uh, so we expect that as we approach the election, there will be a lot of uncertainty and we may begin to see sell-offs. Also, another disincentive for the market is, um, is uh, the rise in interest rates, which uh, would, would be a disincentive for people to raise um, uh, for people to invest in the equities market. And I think um, just to also correct uh, what I said on the ventures, uh, it's um, the form of unsecured um, loan. And one main reason why we've, been, we've not been seeing a lot of companies that are trying to issue unsecured loan is that uh, you need to do a rating and the rate at which they would issue those loans will be significantly higher, which may not make any business sense. Hmm. Great. Great. The market is positive today, uh, Mr. Ayodeji, before I let you go. It's up 1.15%. Top gainers for today, we have Japo Gold, Eternal, Guinness, Mayor, Wapik, top losers, uh, Union Decon, 
uh, CWG PLC, John Holtz, Sunashore, and NEM Insurance. Uh, what's your reaction to this positive trend? It's been negative. It started the week negative after the holidays. Okay, thanks. Uh, yesterday, thankfully, yesterday too was positive. Uh, seven basis points up, and based on the uh, the one point one six percent up, would have been will be traceable to large cap companies. Uh, most of those top companies by percentage uh, don't have significant weight in the in the market. So I would, um, though I didn't see the the closing uh, result, but I I would expect that we may have. Most of those bell, bellwether companies move the markets. Uh, you mentioned Guinness, uh, those also have significant impact on market cap. But the likes of Japan Oil have very minute impact, even if they gain maximum of 10% in a day. So we would be seeing um, interest in those large cap companies, the likes of um, MTN, uh, with li likes of Dangote Cement. We will be seeing interest in those large cap companies that also have also proven to be defensive even uh, uh, despite the uncertainty that we, we feel that political rates may, may bring along, as well as the expected hike in, expected rise in interest rate in fixed income markets. All right, Mr. Oedidiabu, let's uh, thank you so much for your time. And we congratulate you, uh, your new portfolio, Managing Director, Chief Business Officer, Optimus by Afri Invest. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. And always my pleasure to be here.